Hi everyone, so I'm back home in Australia. No more hotel, hostels, apartments, Airbnbs, tree houses. <laughs> this is uh, back to reality now, but I did vlog most of my trip. So I spent 10 weeks in Europe, eight of those with, with my younger sister, Becky, and two of those um, we split and I did some of my own things. So it's all on my channel. I did vlog everything. So I just put together all the little clips of each destination and loaded those up separately. So if you're interested in, in Turkey, in a few Greek islands, um, Denmark, where else did we go? Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and Barcelona, and a few places in England. Check out those videos. Uh, I had the most amazing trip. I can't believe how quickly it went though. But anyway, I thought I would, because I did put a, a video before I left of all the things I took with me, I thought I would do a bit of a review of some of the items and give you just some tips and travel advice um, going forward. So if any of you are wanting to do some travel or just general tips, um, this may be helpful for you. So I have got everything next to me that I'm going to talk about. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's some, um, some help to you. So first I'm going to talk about is my trusty suitcase that I took. So this is um, what I took with me it was it's American tourista luggage uh, case so it is the size of a cabin so you can take it on board with you which um, which is what I aim to do most of the time but we did have luggage um, some legs of the trip which the, I then checked it in and because of that it has come up a bit worse for wear with um, stickers all over it and lots of scratches and things because they don't tend to take very good care of your lu your luggage when it goes under the plane. Just part of the traveling experience. Um, you can't really do much about it. But it was the best piece of luggage that I took over with me. Like it, it's so sturdy and it's so lightweight. Um, and I swear every time I bought something or wanted to add more stuff, it's still closed. Which was a surprise because, I, you know, you get to the point where I don't think it's going to close. But every time the zip still went around. So I was really, really happy with that. And I love the colour, as you can see. Um, a really beautiful aqua blue, uh, which made it really easy to spot when it came around the, um, the baggage terminal, the carousel. So, yeah, loved it, loved it. Yeah, as I said, it has um, come off second best, but it's still fine and it was um really easy to use and uh, yeah definitely going to keep this bad boy for some more trips to come and i love how it has four wheels so it makes it really easy once it does get a little bit heavier you can sit bag on top pull up this um the handle and just and just slide it along the ground like with on the four wheels so it takes off all the pressure on your wrists um, my right wrist is especially quite weak, so having to drag that along just on the two wheels, kind of like on an angle, can get really heavy, especially if you've got to go from, you know, the airport to the hotel, the hostel, and there's a bit of a distance to walk. You really don't want to have that lot of pressure. Well, I didn't, so that was a handy, um, a handy little thing to have. So can't recommend this enough. It was, yeah, very ideal for my, um, for my trip. And I got this cute little um, little tag. It's like, this one is mine. And it's just got your details on the back. But um, I got that from, it's like a, it was called Tiger. I had some money, some change in a currency that I needed to get rid of in the airport. So I bought it, I think it was like two pounds um, from the shop. Okay, so second bag that I took was from Kathmandu. It's this um, camping um, backpack. It is um, a pocket pack of 15 litres, so I'll, it, it folds into itself, but I'll pull it out so you can see, but, so come on, okay, so this is what it's like when it's folded out, so this was perfect, because because this was so lightweight, if I didn't have not, hardly anything in it on my back, it was so easy to carry. I always took this with me, you know, even on just simple hikes and walks, you know, around our destination. Uh, yeah, it was really easy to chuck in the wash when it got dirty. Um, yeah, having just a backpack with you is really handy because 
yeah, if you do want to go on day trips and you know you want to take a water bottle and a hat and some sunscreen and maybe some snacks, a camera, all that kind of thing, it's too it's too much to put in your handbag. And you want if you have something on your backpack, on your back, really easy. And the places we went were really safe, so I didn't have an issue with pickpocketing or anything like that. So this was very recommended um, by someone else actually, and I so I bought it and very happy with it. So. Um, Next item is this handy little uh, lunch, it's like a lunch, like a lunch bag that I got from Kmart just before I left, and which is kind of like a, a mm, Target. It just has clothes and bits and bobs, but this is a really, really great item that I took over. I took all my supplements um, in here, so I had. That all in here, and then I kept adding like foods and bits and pieces that I bought along the way. So I had pretty much everywhere I went, I had my luggage um, suitcase, I had my Katmandu backpack, and this. So that's what I took everywhere. And it was just, yeah, again, really easy to carry around, lightweight, um, and I just thought it was a really good idea to have something like this, just so you've always got all your food in the one area. So, you know, we're going to pick up a bit of some nuts and, you know, bits and thing, bits and pieces to eat, some snacks. Um, I always put everything in here. So, uh, again, really, it was dark colour, so it got um, if it got dirty, I could just chuck it in the wash. But I didn't wash anything until I got home because, you know, when you travel, Washing machines are few, few and far between, so you either got to hunt one down or pay a lot of money. And when you when you've got one, sometimes they charge on weight, so you either you don't you don't want to put too much in there. Um, and other times you have got limited you know space to dry things. You know all those things you don't really realise until you travel. But um, anyway, so this was um, a really good pickup and. Yeah, again, really easy to carry around and it has an, a flat base when you open it up and fill it up. So that stood up um, everywhere really nicely. Um, so a few, then a few, I'm going to just now give you a few tips um, on the foods that I took over as well. So I took over some supplements. So I took over some magnesium and green powder, some camu camu, which is a vitamin C. And I put all those in some individual bags. Really great in theory but when you when, in the, when you want to make a quick drink in the morning I had to open up all the little bags and then take out all the little mixtures and put them into a glass of water and have a drink so in hindsight next time what I'll do is I'll individually measure out uh, say I was away for about 60 days I was away for a bit more but just say you're going away for a certain amount of time and you have a teaspoon of these put in 60 teaspoons and then have a tablespoon of this and put in 60 tablespoons and that way you have the exact proportion all in the one plastic um, bag or container or whatever you're taking with you so you then when you um, wanting to make a drink in the morning you just put out two tablespoons of the mixture or whatever your you know measurements are and it's all done so in hindsight that would be have been a bit better but just a little tip that I thought I would bring up and oh I brought with me um, I picked these up really, really cheap from a... When did I pick these up from? It was actually... Was it a dollar store or...? Yeah, I think it was a dollar store, but I bought a whole collection of them. They're just plastic knives and forks, like picnic knives and forks and a little spoon. And I just kept these in a little plastic um, Ziploc bag. And it's a lifesaver because when you're traveling and you're, on, and you're on the run, you're moving around all the time. So, you know, if you were out for and you just wanted to, to have a quick something to eat, you know, I would buy a little tub of yogurt or a bit of cucumber with some tuna, some avocado, all those kind of things. And we had, um, Becky and I, we had a little cutlery so we could just, you know, sit under a, um, a tree or in the park or on a bench and you've got the cutlery and all that ready to go. There's no need to, um, to try and find a takeaway shop to buy something or just to get the cutlery so it's just all those little things that didn't seem like don't seem like a big deal when you're at home but when you're traveling and you haven't really got too many bases having these kind of items is just really really useful so I would recommend taking over some uh, plastic cutlery set and uh, my next item that I will show you oh 
actually a little trip um, tip take a lock with you I had a lock I didn't bring one so I ended up buying one but I have a lock on my suitcase which is perfect but when you when you do stay at hostels if you are that a lot of them now they do have you know either cages or lockers that you can use they don't charge you but you have to have a lock to be able to use it otherwise you can buy one or hire one from the admin staff but if you've got one with you you can just travel around with that and you can lock up your um, your personal items or things obviously that are um, more important to you and you can put like passports and cameras and things into the locks and you've got one with you so tip to take that um, I brought this travel so it charges your iPhone so when you're traveling around most people have your iPhones now for photos to use Wi-Fi to you know message people social stuff whatever um, so I love iPhones but uh, if you do have one you know the battery is not the best so when you are using especially for photos and things like that it drains the battery really quickly so if you're out for the entire day and then needing to connect to Wi-Fi to you know check your next next destination or to try and work out when your next trains going or anything like that you need the internet and you need your iPhone to be working with the battery so I brought this with me to be able to, to recharge when you're out walking out and about Silly me forgot to bring the actual charger to charge this up before you go out because when you're out and about you just take it with your normal everyday charger and put it in the iPhone but you actually need this bad boy which connects um, this and then this part into the power to recharge this so if you can't recharge this that's no point but anyway so um, I didn't actually end up using this so we, we did have to be a bit careful with um, how much, well I had to be a bit careful how much I used my phone out but tip if you do bring one of these which is very handy make sure you bring the charger um, so I brought my Ray-Bans with me but when, as in, when we were in Greece like we were going to the beach every day going on hikes like things were getting chucked around in the bag and I just I mean, Ray-Bans are really expensive. I think I pay, you know, $300 for these or something, which I love and I've had for about five, five or six years. So they're really, really good. But I kind of thought I just need some really cheap sunnies that I can just chuck in my bag just if I go into the beach or a you know, walk. So I didn't particularly want to have these on me all the time. So I ended up just buying from um, a lot cheap, cheap junk store just some fake Ray-Bans um, that... I could use just yeah for the travel trip so yeah if you are traveling kind of backpacking try not to take too much expensive stuff like you know because some guys you just want to chuck in your bag and then I was always worried that they were going to get broken or you know someone's going to sit on them especially when you're at the beach and things and with a lot of other people so I bought some cheap sunnies and just kept those in my bag um, at the accommodation place so um, what else? So I also I remember when I reviewed my when I went through the products that I was taking with me, I said that I pretty much have used already all the products which I had. So I again love all those products. So if you do take any of those, they're the ones that I recommend. Um, but one thing that I hadn't used was the sunscreen. So I bought this Whatnot sunscreen. It's 30 plus SPF. Normally I don't use sunscreen that often. Um, so when I was in Greece and traveling around and being out in the sun all day, because that's not normally what I do when I'm at home, I'm always, you know, working or, you know, spend a couple of hours in the, in the sun and I don't believe you need sunscreen to have all the time, but because I was out, you know, for hours at a time on a beach or, you know, going for hikes, obviously I wanted to bring sunscreen. So I took this with me. And I only got burnt once and that was like our second day in Ikaria and that was because I think I hadn't been exposed to sun for so long and two I didn't really reapply after going in the water and we were out on the beach for a long time but otherwise after that I was yeah I never I never got burnt again and I, I you probably can't really tell but I did get a really nice color on me um, not so much um, everywhere but definitely on the top half which is real and my legs are nice and tan so it's good to come back to Australia and everyone's white and I've got a bit of color so 
I, yeah, I just uh, recommend this sunscreen. It was really easy to apply. Um, it didn't. It's. It smells. It smells pretty fine. It's got like no horrible toxins and chemicals that are gonna absorb into your skin. So really, really happy with this sunscreen. And I still have even a little bit left. And it's a um, hundred grams, so easy to take on board. Which brings me to my next um, little tip. Now. I intended to take my um, luggage mostly um, in the as cabin luggage, so not check it in. But a couple of times we did have check-in luggage, so obviously you can have things that are over a hundred mils. But when you're traveling around Australia domestically, you can have as much liquid as you want. But when you're traveling around Europe and in the EU, anywhere within the EU. Uh, you need you can only take a hundred mils on board. So it's imp so I did what did I have? I think I had like this little supplement that was like a hundred and eighteen mils and I had to chuck that because I didn't have any check-in luggage. So when you do travel a lot of the airlines like Ryanair and um, EasyJet and a lot of those you have to pay extra to have checked in luggage. So you know if you're carrying oh that was another one I had my shampoo and conditioner um, they were in bigger bottles, so I had to get buy some little cheap, um, you know, small bottles to refill those into, you know, to downsize them because you can't, if you know, you're taking and you checked in luggage, you can't have the bigger bottle. So just a little tip because sometimes the actual price of the airline ticket, I think one of my trips it was like forty dollars. Sorry, yeah, in when you um, change the currency, it was like forty Australian dollars to fly from. Um, where was this flight from um, one Greek island from I think it was from one Greek island back to Athens and to, for me to be then be able to have checked in luggage it was going to cost like $35 so it was nearly as much as another full ticket just to have your checked in luggage so just be mindful of um, of that because it obviously does affect um, what you can take and how and the weight of your luggage as well so um, be mindful of that and actually when I was coming back from Heathrow to Australia so going through the Heathrow Airport they because I only had my um, no because I had a little travel bag of goodies that I had on the plane for me for my face and some soap and things they actually have a minimum of how many 100 ml bottles that you could have. So they give you a little plastic. It was only about this size. You only had one and you can fill up your liquids and put them in here. But that's the maximum you're allowed. So where everywhere else you can have as many liquids as you want as long as they're in the 100 ml bottles. But coming through the Heathrow, um, the Heathrow security, you're only allowed this many. So... That includes, you know, makeup liquids and perfume liquids, everything. So just be really mindful of that. I actually had to chuck a few things out because it didn't close. And the guy was like, nope, you have to be able to close this bag. So it was about this size. So that's a little tip. Just keep that in mind as well. Um, so I did, I didn't take this over. I, so as you can see, it's a, a set that I brought with this one, but I just put my toothbrush in a, a little toothbrush holder. I think I had it in a Ziploc bag, but I ended up putting that in here, which was a good tip. Um, my makeup, I've got to be honest, I think I wore... I only brought like very basic makeup as you would have seen in the packing video, but I think I wore lip gloss twice and that was it. When you're traveling and you're like kind of in and out of places and hostels and you know, I don't know, I just I've never really felt the, the need. I never felt the need. I don't wear much in general anyway, but I never felt the need to do it. I mean, occasionally sometimes when we went out for dinner a few places, I could have, but I never really bothered and yeah i mean i don't regret not wearing not wearing makeup either like it's kind of free you just you know you just being yourself and i don't know i'm comfortable not wearing it so it was fine for me but most people obviously will wear it but i gotta say most people that i met especially in hostels and things no one wears it because you know you just you go into the beach all the time and you're hiking and you're chilling and you're you know so I didn't, uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't pretty much wear any makeup. Um, so, oh, this, this is really, okay, so 
Um, if you watched any of my videos, you would have seen I had a pink one of these, which I bought in the Sunshine, uh, in the Brisbane airport when I flew over to to Athens. Best, best, oh my god, it's a lifesaver getting one of these neck pillows. For people like me, when I fall asleep, I've got no control of my neck. So I can't tell you, like, when I'm asleep, so I'm, I'll give you a demonstration. When I sleep, my neck just, like, I've got no control of my neck, so it rolls around and it's, yeah, it's not good. So if I fall asleep, I keep constantly wake myself up because my neck drops and I wake up with a really sore neck and I just can't sleep. So having one of these was an absolute lifesaver. So I could sleep majority of my trip. So unfortunately they're not sorry and they're not um they're not cheap i think i pay 35 for the one that i bought for my way over and it's the memory foam so get that one it's a little bit more expensive like than the beads you know they can get ones with like bead things in there but they're nowhere near as good so get the memory foam one because they kind of like cushion to you so really really good idea to get one of those if obviously you have no issue sleeping upright and no issue with your neck maybe not but for me it was essential and it was oh, a lifesaver so i thought i would keep it with my for my trip you know because i knew that we were going to be taking maybe some overnight buses and things like that so i would wanted to be able to sleep when I'm doing those things. So I think I had it all the way up in so about week eight. I had traveled with it everywhere and I left it on, I think, a bus coming from the airport to uh, our Copenhagen uh, Airbnb. I was like, I woke up in the middle of the night and I went, well, not woke up, but just when I was sleeping, I was like, wait, what have I done with that pillow? I can't remember seeing it the last few days. And so I must have left it somewhere. Or I was thinking maybe in the cabin. Um, actually, that's where I probably did leave it. You know, in the top when you're in the airplane, you put the bags up in the cabin top. I think I might have pushed it up there and left it up there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I was a bit annoyed about that because I've carried it with it for so long. And anyway, so I thought I'm not not going to buy another one. So when I went to Heathrow, I purchased this one. And in hindsight, even better because I don't know if you can see. Oh. It has a little bit of a flat, um, a flat arch here, so it actually it's a little bit less for your um, like kind of just your head kind of just snuggles in there. So even better, and it's black, so pink was a bit bright and got, it can get a bit dirty. So, and again, it was about thirty five or forty dollars, so not cheap, but oh, a lifesaver. So can't recommend that enough. Um, so also when you travel, as you would have seen in my videos, because of, um, the way I choose to eat, there was a lot of times when there wasn't much available in, in shops or just, but yeah, as I said, when you, you know, when you just want to go out for the day and travel around and it's expensive to constantly have to, you know, go to cafes and to restaurants and, and constantly buy all these meals. So a lot of the time, and we didn't have access to a lot of places, you know, especially in places like Turkey and Greece, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of choice. So, you know, my, so Becky and I, we would, you know, stock up on avocados, cucumber, tuna, all those kind of staple items that you could just carry with you for a few days and didn't need refrigeration. And then we just have those for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So we carried um, around some salt. So I got this herb salt. I picked this up in Spain because I ran out of my Himalayan crack salt. So, you know, and if we had access to some kitchens, you know, facilities, we would boil up some eggs, which you could then take out for the day, the yogurts, you know, nuts and seeds, just those kind of items, which are pretty standard um, worldwide, you can find. But uh, yeah, tuna, avocado, nuts and seeds, yogurt, those kind of things were staple items when you um, didn't have access to a lot of places or refrigeration. So, yeah, fiddle tips, but having some salt on you is was a really, really um, a good idea. Uh, so clothes-wise, I was really happy with everything I took. I think there was a skirt, which I didn't wear because I didn't feel very comfortable in it. I think, um, and what else? No, I think that was the only thing I... Oh, and some um, leggings, which I didn't wear. But otherwise, I wore all my clothes over and over again, and I ended up picking up some, some items along the way. So I was really, really happy. But when you do travel... So, for instance, I bought this top from Kathmandu, actually, as well. 
and so it's like a camping travel top but you know it dries really quickly and you can crush it so when you travel having clothes that you can just easily dry and don't crumble and crush easily is a key and light really light clothing so some of the places like turkey and barcelona it was really really hot so you want things that are breathable and um and don't make you sweat and yeah so really happy with clothes like this so tips um on some clothing and lastly but not least my camera so this is a sony rx100 i've had this for a couple of years now i've been taking this on all my trips and it is a lifesaver. It is so easy and light. And I took all my photos and videos on it. Um, and the best part about it, I've got this little case. So it's kind of like attached to it. So you can untip, take the screwed out and then the top or the bottom part of the case comes off. But so it's really easy to use um, and it has a really easy um screen and yeah just love it so if you are looking for a, 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 um, a simple compact camera that's good at photos and videos I recommend the Sony um, RX100 I think there is newer models but this is obviously the model that I've got and yeah really really happy with that one so yeah they're all my items so I hope that was some use to you I am going to do another video uh, just of some trip so travel tips for flying because there were quite a number of things that I thought even for future that for my reference for future and some people have asked me oh you know how did you go with your flying and you know what's it like because you know from going to Australia to um, to Europe is a long long trip so there's a lot of um, a lot of tips that I've got that uh, I think will be useful um, for people that are want, yeah, wanting to do long haul flights so look out for that video and yeah, anyway, I hope this is helpful and I'll talk to you all later. Bye!